Finally got the JBL Challenge 5. Been listening to it, been testing it. I have to say, surprise, surprise to me, this is the best speaker I've ever tested. No, it's not the best speaker. Sorry, this is not the best speaker I've ever tested, but it's not the worst either. Um, not bad for JBL, although 160 quid, that's what we've come to expect for a speaker like this. We'll see how it stacks up against the JBL Charge 3. Oh, why are you doing the JBL Charge 3? It's very, very old. How old is it? Came out 2016. I'll tell you why. A lot of people still hanging on to their JBL Charge 3, including me. No, I still got it. Because uh, they were never that happy with the difference in the sound with the mono JBL Charge 4. I did get a weird comment uh, just yesterday, I think. Someone said, yeah, it's got two drivers, but it's not actually stereo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me show you, the JBL Charge 3 is stereo, one of the last classics where if you didn't update it to Connect Plus, you can actually wi wirelessly lock them into stereo. Never had to bother with the app. You start them up, they start up in stereo. Oh, it was a dream. JBL have now become a nightmare, but look, I'm gonna play it against the JBL Charge 3 because a lot of people are still interested in this particular speaker, which I do regard as a classic, and I got knocked at the time for saying, I think I'm quite happy with my JBL Charge 3, and against the JBL Charge 4, because guess what? The JBL Charge 5 is the upgrade to the JBL Charge 4. So note, two drivers stereo, two drivers but not stereo. We've got the tweeter, we've got the woofer. I think it's that way around, I'll have to check in a minute. And we've got two passive radiators, still mono, but now a separated, uh, Twitter and Woofer, and by the way, a proper crossover in that. Uh, but mono, mono with the driver there. The racetrack driver, I do make fun of it. Round, round and round it goes, because racetrack, why do they mark it like that? It's oval, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Two passive radiators, but a mono speaker. So, first of all, gonna show you, give you an idea, straight off the bat, what can we expect? Frequency response measurements. JBL Charge 5. As we've come to expect with speakers like this, you hit 80%, that seems to be where they decide you're gonna have your most bass, and after that, bass limits. So you'll just get a raise in the mids and the highs, and it will become a bit more shrill, a bit harder of a listen because it's less balanced. Well, you can see there's almost a complete lack of uh, deep bass there. Against the Charge 3, you can see considerably more in terms of deep bass, where it's completely lacking on the Charge 3, but the Charge 3 has a big upper bass peak, which actually makes up for quite a bit of that difference. The Charge 3, if we look at 60-80%, you can see is quite an obvious smiley face. Upper bass peak, 10 kilohertz peak, compared to what is now at 60%, certainly a smoother looking frequency response. This is not flat by any means, by the way, it's full of dips and peaks, but in terms of the charges uh, against the Charge 3, yes, it's flatter, yes, it has more bass extension, and indeed a bit more into the harmonics range, all the way up to 20 kilohertz now and looks like it goes louder. Against the Charge 4, Charge 4 did have some bass, in terms of deep bass, looks like we've got a bit more now in terms of the Charge 5, and perhaps more noticeably, where we had a complete drop off at the high end, the Charge 5 now does extend further. We did have a big dip, 4.5 kilohertz on the Charge 4, so Charge 5 now looking a flatter response than the Charge 3 and the Charge 4. Looks like it's got a bit more deep bass, still limits at 80%, considerably against the mids and the highs. Promises to be what it should be, a bit of an upgrade on previous charge versions. So on paper, quite promising, albeit it's mono. I have to tell you, immediately uh, I got an update. All my testing has been done on firmware 0.6.1, which is for me the latest firmware. Um, also, this is TL version. Somebody asked me about the ND version. I don't know what versions are out there. I just got the TL. Apparently, uh, someone got a green one and it was ND. Be very handy. If you could uh, post in your comments the, the the version you got, if you don't know how the version, it's the first two letters on the serial number will tell you the version. So if I look at my serial number, it starts with TL. It's the TL version. So a quick comparison uh, of the specs of these three JBL chargers, which we are looking at today. I looked this morning, JBL Charge 3. Uh, it says temporarily unavailable on uh, on the JBL website, I don't, and I tried Amazon, the same thing. When available, normally I could get this for around 80 to 90 pound. We're talking new, of course you can get it second hand, but actually looking at the second hand prices, <laughs> over 100 quid. People really like the JBL Charge 3. 100 pound, you can pick up the JBL Charge 4. And oh my God, JBL, you've done it again. The charge is charging us 160 pounds. 160 pounds for the speaker. I mean, 
It's up against some pretty hot speakers if we're taking the 160 pound uh, price point, and if we're just looking at the size uh, point, it's up against the likes of the XB33 and speakers like that, which I will do in another video, concentrating on your JBL fanboy, your JBL lover. You've already got, yeah, bought all the JBL one, the two, the three, the four, <laughs> which I did as well, by the way. Should I get the five? What, what to expect? Um, in terms of battery, saying on paper, uh, 27 watt hours for both. And it was the older speaker, 22 watt hours. But uh, I did test battery life. And I can tell you, I get four hours maximum. I get four hours, 12 minutes maximum. I get three hours, 48. So basically, they're all around four hours. No change there. But we do now have Bluetooth 5.1. It used to be 4.2. Before that, it was 4.1. JBL do love to uh, mess about with the type of party mode or stereo mode that they use. Party Boost will only pair with other Party Boost speakers. And if you want stereo, we'll only play in stereo with other Charge 5 Party Boost speakers. Connect Plus for the 4, four and we'll obviously, obviously well, none of them backward compatible. We'll only connect with other Connect Plus speakers. And it was Connect, if you do the update to Connect Plus, it will become Connect. If you do the, if you don't, if you leave it at Connect, if you get a new one and it's still on Connect, leave it that way. You can, you get really tasty uh, stereo pairing without having to mess about with the app. We do now have USB-C, but of course we had USB-C on the charge for anyway. <sighs> We've come to expect, they've got rid of the auxiliary input. So we have an uncovered, by the way, it is IPX67, which means not just um, waterproof to one meter th of water and 30 minutes, but it's also dust proof. That's what the six tells us. We got the USB-C port, which is also USB-C charging uh, on the U Charge 4. And we got a little flap under which is just uh, where you can use it as a power bank. So you can stick your USB there and uh, use it indeed as a, a power bank. What you can't do now is use it uh, as a speakerphone. You have speakerphone functionality in the 3 and the 4. JBL being JBL, JBL being JBL, we'll grab at the pennies where we can. No speakerphone functionality. On paper, 40 watts. Oh, blimey. Uh, this could be extreme price, uh, extreme loudness, because JBL Extreme, uh, without plugging the lead in, it's probably around 40 watts, but of course, bigger drivers. Um, and so, even 40 watts, 40 watts, we wouldn't expect it to go as loud. Was 30 watts, was 20 watts. It's now 980 grams, was 965 grams, was 800 grams. And it's creeping up, the weight's creeping up, but it's still under a kilo. What you probably want to know, you, you drop it in the pool, you drop it in the sea, will it float? Yes, it will float, but the drivers will be below the waterline, so it isn't the Holy Grail where it plays with the drivers firing up. All of the JBL chargers, they've always claimed 65 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so I find that a bit strange that they're not even trying to um, say on paper, oh look, the frequency response has improved. So, I already mentioned two drivers, two passive radiators, two, well, one racetrack marketed a driver, two passive radiators, but separate, Tweet a separate woofer to passive radiators. Now, in terms of Bluetooth latency, was never good, still is no good, is a little bit better, but 125 milliseconds, my average latency over local and streaming uh, files, that's not good. That's obvious lip sync in this day and age from JBL. That's not good, but we do have a separate tweeter. And I wanna go straight into, how does it sound? How does it sound? Well, I'm gonna play them at 50%, around the 50%. This plays a bit louder, so uh, it'll be 45%, 50% volume.
Answer Charge 3, I was a bit surprised uh, because we're, what, we're four years, five years on. It's almost like the Charge 5 is the JBL Charge 3, but with a, a mini subwoofer. So there's a bit more bass extension. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very similar. So if you are a JBL Charge 3 fan, albeit it was stereo, this is not stereo, unless you have two of them, of course, um, you're probably gonna like the sound of the JBL Charge 5 because uh, the, the vocals, the mids, kind of, there is more meat to the bones, let's say. It is a more meaty sounding speaker, but but still, the overall sound signature is so similar that it's almost, almost the JBL Charge 3, but with proper bass extension. It's almost like they've taken the JBL Charge 3 and fixed it, albeit we don't have stereo. Whereas uh, against the Charge 4, to me, oh, that's now is an upgrade because is a mono speaker, sounds like a mono speaker. That for me, like Fizz, yes, when it came out, it was, all right, it was pretty reasonable bass. That's what you're getting. You, you compared the Charger in the Charge 4 and you said, oh, well, now we've got some bass, and you did. But you also lost the highs, you lost some clarity. Um, and uh, to me, it can sound, sound, can sound quite dull. I know a lot of people will like the JBL sound signature, but for me, the JBL Charge 5 now adds the fizz that was missing from the JBL Charge 4 and adds bass extension, whereas it was quite a thin bass on the Charge 4. JBL do like to have a very narrow band for their, you know, for their bass and put all the power into that little band. It's a little trick that does work for them, but it's a bigger, fuller uh, bass now. It's a meteor sound altogether. So to me, that's the JBL Charge 3 fixed, but sounds kind of still like a JBL Charge 3, but still actually it is an upgrade to the Charge 4. If I was just comparing the two, I'd say, oh, that definitely sounds better. I'm not saying this sounds fantastic, but it sounds decent. If you like the JBL Charge uh, sounds that you were getting before, this would be an upgrade to it. It's not, I was expecting it to actually to be a lot bigger. It's a bit meatier uh, in terms of, there's more of a bulge there towards the bottom. And by the way, they've done their normal stripey, I don't know, it's like icing on a cake, isn't it? But I don't, I'm not sure it's that functional. We actually look uh, if it's helping the base when it's on a surface or not, but the bit was, was a bit more solid. Uh, on the, the other two, although actually that's a bit concave, so yeah, it's okay, I mean, you can take it or leave it. We do have the power button, if I just switch that on, you'll see. It functions both, obviously, the power button and uh, volume indicator. Uh, if, if you want to use party boost, you turn on party boost, um, and it will light up to tell you it's in party boost mode. Uh, volume up, volume down, uh, pause, play button, the normal that you expect. So. That was 50% volume. So I said, it's not all win-win because it's still obviously mono, narrow sound stage. The vocals are right out in front, they're in your face. This is a very aggressive, exciting sounding speed speaker, but without a wide sound stage. And, but the actual vocals, although they stand right out front, uh, there is an what I call electronic signature to, to it, uh, to yours, to some ears, it will probably sound a bit shrill. I don't know, shouty, not even shouty, but um, a bit too edgy. I would say it was edgy, and for some people, a bit too over the edge. This is an exciting speaker if you want exciting sounding music um, and don't need all the details. At 50%, it's already sounding like that. I'm going now to around 75%. <laughs>
JBL Charge 3, JBL Charge 5, clearly the Charge 5 has more extended deep bass, 2 decibels up at 65 hertz on the Charge 3, but LUFS, actual perceived loudness terms, what you actually hear, lower bass on the Charge 5, 6 decibels up on the Charge 3, 3 decibels up in mid bass, but the Charge 3 with its big upper bass push, because it doesn't have the deep bass, minus 30, minus 32 on the Charge 5 means We've actually got a bit more upper bass punch on the Charge 3, which helps to hide the fact it doesn't have so much bass in terms of deep bass. So a more bass heavy sound altogether, as you can see, a big rounded bass on the Charge 5 compared to the Charge 3. But outside of that, if we look at the rest of the frequency response, very, very similar. The Charge 4, the Charge 5. Unlike with the Charge 3, now there is a big difference at the peaks the high end. If we look at, say, 4 to 7 kilohertz, we're talking this region where you see there's a big drop off on the charge 4, but it's still much stronger on the charge 5. So there's a difference at the high end than in the bass. Bass peak, minus 26, minus 28, 2 decibels louder on the charge 5. But again, what you actually hear, perceived loudness terms, luffs, with 3 decibels up for deep bass on the charge 5. We're 1 decibel up in mid bass, but we're even still up on upper bass by a decibel on the charge 4. So we've got a bit more fizz because it's a bit more consistent in the high end. We've certainly got more deep bass. And so charge 4 against charge 5, for me, the charge 4 just sounds like it's a bit dull and doesn't have the bass extension of the charge 5. Again, pretty much uh, the same story. There is a significant, although there's no even mid bass or deep bass on the charge 3, there is a significant upper bass push or peak, not quite a peak, it's quite fat, but it's it's all upper bass. And to such an extent that it can cover a lot that of the, the deeper bass that is missing. So it does make up a lot. It can, in, depending on the track, if there's deep bass there or not, sound quite similar uh, to the Charge 5. Not in terms of the vocal and not in terms of the aggressiveness, but in its overall signature. The upper bass hides a lot, but it, there is no deep bass. And there's only a, a modicum of uh, a mid bass but with the Charge 4, um, it has a significant uh, dip around the 4 to 7 kilohertz, which is why it sounds so dull. And it, we don't have that now. We actually have a rise at that same point on the JBL Charge 5 and extends well into the harmonics 15 kilohertz and above. What I'm getting from all of this is I'm liking what I'm hearing from the JBL Charge 5 in context. In context of being a JBL Charge speaker, what I'm not liking is 160 pound asking price. If that was a 100 pound speaker, if it was directly up against the likes of the um, Sony XB33, the PL7 from LG, speakers like that, I would say it's a contender. It would be interesting to hear what they sound like uh, up against each other in an AB, which I will do in a, another video. But it, it's JBL we're talking about. Well, the JBL Extremely Price 3, 280 quid, 160 pounds. Well, that's a lot of money. Only you can decide uh, if, if it's really going to be worth it. Maybe it's go maybe it's going to go so loud that 40 watts that ultimately, no, that's all that, that's going to be the deal a breaker uh, as, you, as as such. So let's go a bit louder. You've already seen the frequency responses. 80% bass is limiting. So what happens after? So we're at the, the point of bass limiting around there. Um, so eight, around 85%, so I'm still playing this at its sweet spot, 80%, and these are 85% because that's where they're about volume matched. So we'd expect to see more of an advantage now at 85%. Let's get big, until I forget my name. Let's get big, jump right side to the left. Let's get big, big it up while you can.
and die Cause I'm so bloody tired Yeah But I'm alright Trust me baby I'm alright I'll just sit back and enjoy the ride Ha 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 I've been looking for something that holds me all night I've been staying in the bubbles until the sun rises It's so casual, always living the same life I don't really mind, but I just need to take some time to get away Massive difference uh, from pre the other comparisons we did. It's pretty consistent all the way up. Edgy, exciting, but lacking. Certainly, most noticeably um, uh, for me, in the mids. Almost no detail at all. You can just hear faintly things are there, but you, you miss it. This is, a, this, is a J this is a speaker for people not uh, trying to analyze their music. This is an exciting. Vocals absolutely forward and in your face. Um, it's, I, I call this an aggressive speaker, but for some people that it's going to be too, too edgy, especially the high end is quite, it's not, there's no finesse about this speaker. Um, it's quite electronic sounding uh, and quite edgy. Uh, uh, it's a bit, not, it can be a bit shrill. A lot of it is going to depend on if you're playing bright tracks or not. But hmm, is that the best JBL Charge 5? Is this the best JBL Charge so far? Well, um, so far I would have to say absolutely, except for the blinking price. So what's the ultimate headroom? 40 watts, 30 watts, 20 watts, how loud do they go? Maximum volume, 100%, charge five goes the loudest, as you would hope, 40 watts on paper, but probably by not as much as you would hope. Over the charge three, just over a decibel louder overall, helped by the fact that the charge three doesn't have to drive any deep bass because it doesn't have any deep bass, and so it maintains mids and highs, and that's where it's getting its volume from, even in terms of peaks, it's only a decibel behind. But the story, if we look at overall bass, 30 to 200 hertz, so even proper upper bass right down to deep bass. We are two decibels down, even with its upper bass push. We are two decibels down overall on the Charge 5. And in terms of the deep bass, where it really counts, you're six decibels down, 30 to 65 hertz, four decibels down in mid bass, and one decibel up for the upper bass. So why only two decibels overall? Well, because the upper bass counts for a lot more of what you hear. Minus 24 is a lot louder than minus 34. So overall, Take all bass into account, charge five, two decibels louder than the charge three, 
Probably not as much as you might have expected. But against the Charge 4, Charge 4 does not go that loud. It's three decibels up. But then it's not even as loud as the Charge 3, but it had a bit more bass. I said had because it's now the older speaker. In terms of overall bass, Charge 4 is the same as the Charge 3 with its big upper bass peak. The Charge 4 does win in terms of mid bass and a decibel up. In deep bass, 100 to 200 hertz goes much louder than the rest of the bass. And the Charge 3 is actually a decibel louder there. That's why overall, about the same in overall bass terms. That, I said it was a classic, didn't I? And it's really holding up. Uh, when you go to maximum volumes, I know it's because it's not, <laughs> isn't that much deep bass, but mm, that's a dull, not much of a listen, is it? Uh, once you hit maximum volume, we're still getting something out of it. Yes, it distorts a bit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's getting a bit more shrill, but it's, it's holding its own, especially if it's all about loud, you're going outside, you're going outdoors. I did use this as a, a beach speaker where it really comes into its own. It's, you just want to, <laughs> hear something uh, against uh, against all the background noise. But JBL Charge 5, it goes louder. It's not much bigger. It's more or less the same size. We're getting, we're, now we're getting proper bass. We, what we do now get, completely missing on both of these speakers, is some resonance to the bass. So th we're now getting into the realms of that bottom end where it's enough to start getting a sense of it shaking. It's not actually shaking the room. I'm calling it resonance because it goes beyond just having a bang bang sound. It's almost a vibrating, it's doing more. It's got more character in the bass. We're at that point where it starts to have some resonance, completely missing from the other two JBL charges. So for me, it's a really nice upgrade, but it's not the world's greatest speaker. You're not gonna do um, any, you know, delicate listening on this. This is a very forward, aggressive speaker. Has a hell of a lot of impact. Goes, pre uh, you know, reasonably loud for its size. And it certainly uh, kicks about now of the previous two JBL charges. Well, all the previous JBL charges, of course. So the question is obviously going to be, um, how does it stand up to what should be its competitors, XB33 and the likes? But it's £160. A lot of people are just going to pay because it's JBL. Uh, it's fine. You like JBL. You like it as a brand. We've got... The, the logo is five times the size as it used to be. Um, and you can put that on the beach and people will now know. I'm not gonna, I don't have to tell them it's a JBL. They know I'm paying lots of money for my speaker. So I must be wealthy. I must have loads of money. I'm a JBL speaker. Because you think 160 quid, you could get two motion booms, two uh, motion pluses, uh, and lots of other speakers where it becomes an issue. But of course, if you're part of the JBL brand, if you've got loads of JBL speakers and you've got other party boost speakers, they've got to be party boost speakers, it will go into party mode and you don't have to use the app. But if you want stereo, you want two of them, you've got to go into the app. The app is a nightmare. The likes of Sankor can do it lovely, easy, a push of a button, uh, wirelessly lock into stereo. JBL, it's not just JBL, even their so-called designer brand, the, the Harman end of it. Look at their Onyx Studio. They don't even <laughs> don't even know their own speaker plays in stereo. They advertise it as a dual mono audio, whatever they call it. You guys out there, you've discovered it plays in stereo. Harman apparently is a massive secret to them. So, what are the Bluetooth speakers and how they do their marketing and their research and what they care about? You know, it's really mostly branding, isn't it, with the likes of JBL. But there you go. So, my first review of the JBL Charge Five. It's very positive. I did enjoy listening to the JBL Charge 5. I did miss a wide, st uh, a wide sound stage. It's very narrow. Not so narrow that you think, oh, it just sounds really compressed. It's quite a fun listen, but if I start A-B-ing it with other speakers, it's very obvious the details I'm missing. There's loads of stuff going on. Uh, with other, if I, even against the XB33s, the motion booms, which I have tried, you can hear stuff going on in the other speakers, completely missing. However, the vocals, they're so forward, it's, it's like, Someone talking in, in your face, you turn to back off social distance and all that. So I think anyone who likes really exciting music, I've said it many times now, haven't I? But I think that's the real takeaway. Exciting, listen, uh, but you don't want to sit there and try and pick out d d uh, some of the details. So very forward vocals and a, a bass that goes deep enough that you start to get some resonance. May well sound fantastic as a stereo pair. I don't know. Maybe at some point we'll try that, but from this, from this review, the takeaway is, it's, it's the best JBL Charge so far. It's a big upgrade on the JBL Charge 4. And I think you can probably think of it as the JBL, as, a, the, as the JBL Charge 3 now fixed. 
We've now got base. We've now got a bit more uh, meat on the bones, but the overall signature is uh, pretty much quite quite similar, I have to say, albeit that was stereo. Hope you got something out of this first JBL Challenge video, and thank you for watching.